everything that is going on with Joe Biden is so insane. Not just Biden, not just the fact that he's refusing to step down despite the fact that all the polls show that he's going to lose, but the gaslighting, the gaslighting from the media, the Biden dead enders that don't want to acknowledge what we all see is happening. I just, I wanted to make this video really quick to just go over some of the insanity, okay? Some of the crazy things that have been happening today or in the in the last couple, not just today, probably I would say actually since the debate, right? So we went over the insane interview that he had with George Stephanopoulos. And then he had another insane interview with Lester Holt in which he was asked if he reviewed the debate. And he was like, I was there, man. I was there, Jack. Bro, that's not the same thing as watching your performance back. Like, what? And endless gaslighting, okay? So hold on. I'm going to share the my screen so we can... <laughs> you guys, they're in so much denial, okay? So like earlier today on X, not on X, on CNN... Chris Coons, who is like one of Biden's closest allies in the Senate, was asked about Biden and he goes, yeah, but really the grassroots really love him, you know, bro, polling has been showing that he is going to lose. Not only is polling showing that he's going to lose, including in Virginia. OK, that's how bad it is. He won Virginia last time by a lot. And now it's he's going to lose Virginia. Seriously, like. How much more? They're like, he's waiting to see data. How much more data do you need, Playboy, before you become convinced that you are a liability to the Democratic ticket? Like, so, okay. So, <laughs> Wolf Blitzer shows him a poll saying that a majority of Democratic voters want him to drop out because that's what they keep trying to do. You know how the media keeps trying to do that? They keep trying to do the old, like, Oh, it's just the elites. Rank and file voters want him to stay. It's just the elites that are trying to make him drop out. Bro, it's literally the voters. Why are you lying? We have eyes. We see the data. Okay, so hold on. I'm going to share my screen. It's just so crazy. All right. He didn't actually step down, did he? No. Oh my gosh, I thought that was... <sighs> I wish that was true, okay? So, 65 to 35. Should Biden withdraw from the race 65 to 35? These are Democratic voters, bro. So when you're like, oh, uh, actually, it's just the elites. No, it ain't. <laughs> and then you've got he can't even finish a sentence you guys he can't even finish a sentence like yeah the only people you have still defending Biden are like Bernie and fucking AOC being like sorry guys that's the best we can do oh my gosh and this liar Listen, when I hit the ground I don't know that interact with folks look at the crowd that Joe Biden talked about the, the First of all, crowd is no indication of whether or not somebody's going to win or not. Trump has huge crowds. Trump always had huge crowds. He had huge crowds in 2016 and 2020, and he lost. That was the argument that deranged Trump supporters used during the 2020 election. Oh, well, we have big crowds, so that's why we know Trump is going to win. And Democrats made fun of them for thinking that because that's not how voting works. So first of all, it's a lie that Biden has these huge crowds. But even if he did have these huge crowds, okay, even if he did, the fact remains that like crowd is not indicative of whether or not somebody's actually going to win or not. Ask Bernie. Oh my gosh, this guy, Jimmy Harrison is the actual worst. I mean, always every DNC chair is. You had like Debbie Wasserman Schultz, total garbage. Then you had Tom Perez. They're just paid liars, okay? And I get that they're supposed to lie, but listen to this insane liar here because he wants to keep his job. Remember that. If they were to pick a new candidate, 
they would get a whole new staff and they could easily replace Jamie Harrison. So he wants to keep his job. These people don't care about democracy. I want you to remember that. They claim democracy is on the ballot. Democracy is at stake. They do not care about democracy. If they actually cared about the threat to democracy, they would be pushing Joe Biden out. But instead, you have this snake getting on here, being trying to gaslight everyone and telling the media that it's their responsibility for the polls to go up and not the responsibility of the candidate in his campaign. Oh, my gosh. It's so crazy polls that are most important to me is when I hit the ground and I interact with folks. The, the polls that are most important to me is when I hit the ground and I interact with folks. Look at the crowd that Joe Biden talked to at the NAACP. These are folks who are leaders, black leaders in communities across this country. Joe Biden had them on their feet. And if you went in and you did a poll of those folks in there, I can guarantee you, you would have probably got 90, 95 percent saying, yes, we're we're still riding with Joe. OK, and I love how they keep trying to make this happen. OK, they keep trying to be like, oh, but you can't ask Joe Biden to step down because black voters. It's like, you know who they don't want to talk to? They don't want to talk to all the black voters under 40. Um, Because black voters under 40. Because I spent a lot of time in around leftist circles and all those leftists online spaces too. Leftists do not want to vote for Joe Biden. Black leftists do not want to vote for Genocide Joe. Young black people are not riding with Biden, okay? It's like this is just, this is so cringe, them trying to manufacture this routine. Look at the response that he got in Detroit just recently. Right. They're, not only were people standing on their feet, but they were chanting, oh, Joe, well. don't go. I mean, they, these people effusively, these are working class people who believe in this president because this president has always believed in them. There are people right now in this country who don't have student loan debt, but had hundreds of thousands of dollars of debt four years ago, and they don't have it now. That's because of Joe Biden. There's people right now, the people like my grandma, who was who are paying hundreds of dollars a month for insulin, but they don't have to pay he now because of Joe Biden. That. This president hey. has been transformational for working people in this country. And what we have to do is instead of having people get on TV and start talking about what well, Joe Biden needs to leave, talk about what Joe Biden has done and what he will continue to do. If Joe Biden is elected not and we are able to wipe out American. medical debt, I can tell you in the black community, in my family, how transformational that will be. Uh, you know, when we think about capping the cost of rent, I can tell you how transformational that will be. Rent capping is amazing, but we can't make we have that these people who are talking about, you know, talking about ripping away people's freedoms and their rights. I, I, I just want people to step back and, and just think about where we are. If you want the polls to go up, then hell, go out and talk about Joe Biden. Talk about the good that he has done for it's this country and have his back like he has had our back for these past four years. So that that's where I am. You know, I, I, there's no time for hand wringing. It's about rolling up your sleeves, knocking on these doors and making sure folks are registered and getting people uh, ready to go to the polls. They're more of us than they are of them. The question is, are we going to be unified or are we going to do what we do, which is a crab in the bell, pulling each other down? And that is where we are. That was incredible. I love how he actually acts like it's her responsibility or the media's responsibility to talk about Biden's accomplishments. And therein lies one of the big problems with his campaign. He can't do it. He can't do it. Yeah. Canceling medical debt would be amazing and transformative if you actually did that. But a lot of your campaign promises from last time you guys didn't bring up again once the election happened, you know, like uh, raising the minimum wage, voting rights, health care, all that shit went out, totally out the window the second Biden got elected. It was never brought up again. But let's just for a second take these seriously. That would be transformative. And so would capping rent. But Joe, Joe Biden can't make that case. The other night when he was talking about it, he said instead of capping it at 5%, he said $50. That's the problem. Joe Biden is not going to win. He cannot campaign. He cannot make the case. So instead of going and telling the media, oh, it's your job to talk about Joe Biden's accomplishments, that is incumbent on the incumbent. 
That is up to him, Joe Biden, and you guys, his surrogates. It is up to the campaign to be out there making that case every day, not the media. Did you guys not learn anything from Trump? Every single day, Trump would be out there touting his accomplishments, even when they were made up. Every day. Greatest economy in the world. Lowest unemployment. Joe Biden's had lower unemployment. Joe Biden's had better stock markets. The same shit that Donald Trump would brag about. But do you hear them talking about that? No. No. Because he can't. And you guys aren't even doing it. You're not even doing it. You're not even out there. It's his surrogates making the case. You are now because you're panicked, but where you been? You guys should be out there every single day and you're not. It's, it's just amazing. Truly amazing. He just wants to stay in power. He like lied. The I don't remember what the argument was he was having with, um, I think it was Nate Silver, but I mean, he was just, he was literally just lying about the poll. And then you've got Simone Sanders telling Morning Blow today that, and then you got Simone Sanders telling Morning Joe today that like, you know, their Democrats are upset, you know, that it's all out in the open. We'll say is that they don't understand what is happening in terms of uh, why is, is our family business, as someone said to me, playing out on national television. Mm -hmm. And so that's one piece. The other piece though is, you know what's so embarrassing about that? First of all, Mika Brzezinski. Mm, yeah. But second of all, um, it's not just your business. It's our business. Okay? I voted for Joe Biden in 2020. I didn't want to. I had voted for Bernie Sanders. But you guys rigged the primary and only gave me the choice to vote for him or Trump. So I voted for him. So I do have a say in this, actually. Every single voter has, a, whether they voted for Joe Biden or not, should have a say in this. Independents who might vote for him, left-leaning, non-voters. <laughs> Could have been Bernie Sanders, you know, who actually is sentient. But no, no, no. You guys just had to rig it. You guys just had to rig it. Which, speaking of that, I think I have that clip. Oh my gosh, I keep getting distracted. You should be on the ticket or not? Look, 14 million people voted for me to be the nominee. Well, you didn't have a primary. In the Democratic so... Party. Okay? I listen to them. He can barely talk. Do you feel like you've weathered the storm on, on this? He can barely talk. Answer was, I don't think so, no. Have you since seen it? I've seen pieces of it. I'm not much old debate. And the reason I ask because Why? the question is, are you all on the same page? Of the work? Are you seeing what they saw, which was moments of, frankly, that appeared to be, you appeared to be confused. He looks confused Listen, now. Why don't you guys ever talk about the 18, the 28 lies he told? Where, where are you on this? Why didn't the press ever talk about that? 28 times it's confirmed he lied in that debate. I had a bad, bad night. I wasn't feeling well at all. And I had been, without well, I mean, I screwed up. Well, anyway. But, I, mean, I just asked a question because the, the, the idea that you may or may not have seen what some of these other folks have seen, you're not on the same. I got to see I was there. <laughs> I got to see I was there. And by the way, seriously. I don't have to see I was there. First of all, he looks like disoriented like he doesn't know what's going on like just his resting face he has like resting senility face resting confused face second of all he's like i was there that's reckless as a candidate you should be watching back your performances to see where you could improve even if you were doing a good job the fact that he refuses to watch it is so reckless but you've got again I don't even know who this is, but these Biden dead enders who's like, watch President Joe Biden lean forward and put Lester Holt in his place. Get him, Joe. Oh, my gosh. This These have to be bots. And if they are people, they really are dead enders. Two things. 
first the process, right? It is not the electeds and the party leaders that pick the their rep, their representatives. The people pick the representatives, and so it is it, the process is not that the people that the the elected okay. leadership, this small group, should be picking who the Democratic nominee is first and foremost. The people picked, and they picked Joe Biden. Now people can have qualms about the primary process and say they didn't feel like it was open. Well, boo, it was a primary process, okay? We can't say that the primaries okay. weren't weren't weren't, weren't had and ballots weren't cast. My progressive friends who would like to live in a fantasy land, they need to come back to reality. Yeah. And the reality is this. The sitting president of the United States of America is a Democrat. A Democrat that would like to run for re-election so much so that he has declared a re-election campaign. Right. In that case, the Democratic National Committee will not facilitate a primary process. There will be no debate stage for Bobby Kennedy, Marine Wood, Marianne Williamson, or anyone else to stand Bill, we're going to have and another Bobby Kennedy in an empty chair in the debate. Right. There will be no debate. No, no debate. The Democratic yeah. National Committee administers the debates, and they're not going to set up a primary process for debate to for someone to challenge the head of the Democratic Party. Oh, would you look at that? So there she is, being like, "Listen, guys, we already had a primary, and the people spoke." And then, like five minutes later, she's like, "There," or, or before, because this happened before. She's like, uh, "There is no primary." Like, no, of course we're not going to have a primary. Of course we're not going to have debates. Of course we're not going to let anybody challenge him. It's amazing. It's amazing. Endless lying, endless gaslighting. Never forget how much the Democrats lied to you during this entire thing. During this entire thing. So while they're lying and pretending that there was a full debate and everybody spoke, the people have spoken, we've had a full debate. Here's Adam Smith talking, saying... Saying the quiet part out loud, just saying the quiet part out loud about what really happened in the primary. I got to make one other point. Yeah. So the president talked today about how now it's all the elites yeah. who are trying to force him out. Right. I love that. I know that guy. This point is a good point. Him saying that it's elites that want to force him out. Come on. L-O-L. <laughs> Let's remember what happened in 2020. Yes, okay. The president did not run a great primary campaign. He lost badly in Iowa, New Hampshire, and Nevada. He came out of Nevada, and Bernie Sanders looked like the presumptive nominee. And this exact same group of people the elites. that the president is now deriding as elites, and by the way, they're not. They're Democrats, okay? Well, they they're are. party operatives, they're donors, they're volunteers, decided, and to all the Bernie supporters out there, I'm not judging this positively or negatively, they decided they didn't want Bernie Sanders to be the nominee. They decided that Joe Biden would be the better nominee, and credit, again, to the president. He decided that because he did eight years as vice president. He did the years in the Senate. He had the record to be a strong president. And so they, through their support behind Joe Biden yeah. and Pete Buttigieg and Elizabeth Warren and Mike Bloomberg and Amy Klobuchar, and I may be forgetting a few others, stepped aside right. for the candidate who was better. This myth that somehow Joe Biden came in and rescued us, it has been a nationwide movement since Donald Trump was elected president. And in 2020, that nationwide movement said, Joe, you're the best guy. Let's go. Right now, they don't think he is. Well, it actually wasn't a nationwide movement, as you just explained yourself. It was a small cadre of elites that ensured that Joe Biden won by offering cabinet positions and favors to the other Democratic candidates during the primary of 2020 to drop out and coalesce around Biden to prevent Bernie from taking the nomination when he was about to do so. And now look where we are. Now look where we are. Good job. Good job, everybody. Embarrassing. Embarrassing. I just like that he accidentally just like said the truth. It's just amazing. It's, it's truly amazing. But instead, we have, you know, instead of anybody acknowledging this, you know, but here you have AOC. Okay. He has made clear since that he is in this race. The matter is closed. He had reiterated that this morning. He has reiterated that to the public. Joe Biden is our nominee. He is not leaving this race. He is in this race, and I support him. Now, what I think is critically yeah. important right now is that we focus on what it takes to win. Okay, I've heard enough. The fact that she is like, he's our nominee. The case is closed. No more, like, it's literally this. 
Like, no more conversation, guys. No more. Case closed. Joe Biden's our nominee. It's like, how was it that Bernie Sanders and AOC became the biggest cheerleaders for Biden? Like, we're just pretending the genocide in Gaza isn't happening. We're just pretending that he's not senile and you guys are the ones propping him up. I just, it's, oh my gosh. But remember how, remember guys, I really don't want you to forget how much you have been lied to by these Democratic elites, by the establishment, by Joe Biden and his cabinet, all his defenders, all the corporate Democrats and the progressive Democrats, the media, the so-called liberal progressive media, Democratic operatives, everybody in Democratic politics has been lying to you. Remember this gem? talked about. He owned that the debate was not his best night. Uh, and it and he said himself, it's not an excuse, but it's an explanation. Who I think, um, in addition to the two major trips, uh, he was also uh, doing, continued to do his presidential duties. He worked late in doing that. And he also prepared for the debate. And on top of that, there was obviously the jet lag, as you just asked, asked about. And also he had a cold. And you all heard directly, you heard, you heard from him during the debate. He had a hoarse voice. He talked about, he owned that the debate was not. You're not owning it if you followed that up with 967 excuses. She rolled out like a long old fashioned like Santa Claus list of excuses. You're not owning it in that case. Just endless, endless lying and gaslighting from these ghouls. Although none of us should be surprised because they've been lying and gaslighting from that same podium for the last nine months about the genocide in Gaza. So. I guess it's really not a surprise. And then they started calling his press conference a big boy conference. That was supposed to be his big comeback. The big boy conference. It's like... <sighs> Joe Biden is losing the popular vote. He's losing the popular vote. Do they not, do they not understand? Like, I don't, I don't understand how they don't understand. Okay. Because there was a, I'm looking for it right now. There was a, poll recently. Oh my gosh. It was literally just today that he was like, um, that he was like, I've put all these blacks in my cabinet. And then, and then, oh wait, no, that was a couple weeks ago. It was today that he was like, um, Oh, and my secretary of state, you know, the black guy talking about Lloyd Austin, like, and then mentions Katanji Brown Jackson. It's just endlessly, endlessly embarrassing. I have to pull this clip up. He's not going to win. That is the thing that they're... Um, that they're just pretending not to understand, pretending not to get. It's like, where did my... President. They're just pretending not to know what we all see. It's... And I don't know when it's going to stop because he's not going to win. This is, this is where we're at. July 16th to 18th. So this is a new poll. He's beating him 
52 to 47. So he's actually widened his lead. Amazing. And he's beating Harris too, according to this poll. This is just... <sighs> They're just choosing not to see it. They're choosing not to see it. This is very clear that he's not going to win. And then they go, oh, well, you know, the polls are always tight. You know, it's a tight race. It shouldn't be. It shouldn't be. It is so reckless for them to keep Biden at the top of the ticket. It is so reckless. He's not going to win. This is not going to get better. It's only going to get worse. And for them to leave him at the top of the ticket is not only reckless, but it shows that they don't care about losing. They don't care if Donald Trump wins. And they don't really believe that Donald Trump is the threat to the democracy that they say that he is. Because if they really believed that Donald Trump was an existential threat to our democracy, they would be doing everything they can, everything they could to beat him. They would remove Biden to ensure or force Biden out or have him step down to ensure that we would have a shot. But they're not. They're just saying, oh, you know, it's always a tight race. Polls are always close. I thought this was existential. I thought this was existential. If it's really existential, then why are you talking like that? Why would you risk it? If they really believe that Biden was such a threat to democracy, I mean, Trump, <laughs> maybe that's a Freudian slip. If they really believed that, then why would you risk it? Why would you risk it? And there was a Democratic leak recently that said that some House Democrats, anonymously, of course, because they're cowards, were saying that they were resigning themselves to a Trump presidency. If you really believed that he was an existential threat to the democracy, then why would you resign yourself to him winning? Why wouldn't you force Biden out and do every single thing that you could do to ensure that the Democrats had the best chance? But you're not. So what does that say? It says that you don't really believe it. And maybe they're fine. Maybe because, you know, Democrats are losers. They kind of like being in the minority because they can raise more money that way. They raise a lot of money when they're in the minority because Trump bad, orange man bad, and they raise a ton of money. So I'm just finding the whole democracies at stake really hard to believe when this is how they're behaving, when this is what we are seeing publicly facing. They don't really believe it. Biden is incapable of campaigning. He is incapable of it. You think because he had one okay speech where he didn't fall on his face off of a teleprompter that that's going to erase the fears? Gaslighting. Endless gaslighting. And you know what? When the Democrats lose, because so many of us have been sounding the alarm and they continue to spit in our faces, they are going to deserve it 100%. They will deserve it. Because we saw this coming. Okay? This is like the meme of Austin Powers where the car or the tractor is coming at the guy and everyone can see it from like a mile away, but he's still just screaming no. And then the Democrats afterwards will go, how did this happen? How did this happen? Everybody can see how it's happening. It's actually happening in slow motion. It's happening in slow motion. You are choosing not to do anything about the iceberg that we can all see. So when they lose, it is they are going to try to blame everybody else. They're going to blame Russia, Russia, Russia. They're going to blame Putin. They're going to blame voters. They're going to blame progressives. They're going to blame leftists. They're going to blame Jill Stein. They're going to blame your mom and your cat. The only people they will have to blame for what it is going to look like, it's going to be like a catastrophic loss, like a landslide loss, like a red wedding. The only people that they are going to have to blame is themselves. They're disgusting. They're disgusting. What a, I, I just wish we could get rid of all of our parties. Seriously, the Democratic Party, obviously the Republican Party, I'm not trying to downplay them. They're fascists. 
I'm not downplaying them, downplaying them actually. Those of us who keep screaming about how like ridiculous this is, it's because we actually do care and we do understand the threat of Trump. We do understand the threat of Project 2025. We do understand the threat that the Republicans pose. And that is the reason why we are screaming so fucking loud. That is the reason why we're sounding the alarm because we do understand the threat. And the question is, why don't you? Why don't they understand the threat? Why don't they? And they're going to lose and they're going to blame everybody else, but they don't have anyone to blame from but themselves. And them ignoring these polls and the voters, 75% of voters that are Democrat or Democrat leaning say he should drop down, drop out. I mean, you don't think that's authoritarian? How is that not authoritarian that you won't listen to the people because of Joe Biden's ego? He's such an egomaniac that he thinks that he is the only one that can beat Trump and doesn't want to step down. And his egomaniac wife who wants to keep power instead of doing what's best for the country. How is that not authoritarian? This whole thing is insane. This whole thing is insane. Ugh, we need to get rid of the parties. We seriously do. The Democrats are garbage. And like I said, I understand that the Republicans are a threat. I'm not downplaying that, but man, the Democrats, it is hard to watch this without thinking at times that they are trying to lose, that they are full, full, full controlled opposition, that they don't really oppose the Republicans at all. This is all a game. This is all part of the matrix and they are there to lose and just put up a front of opposition because they are certainly not an opposition party. Step down, bro. Step down. Oh, my gosh.